This is one of a series of tutorials on the POP11 subsystem of the POPLOG system. Uh, this one is concerned with the use of POP11 for teaching, in particular for teaching a subset of AI, but also for teaching introductory programming for absolute beginners. I'm Aaron Sloman. I'm in the School of Computer Science at the University of Birmingham. and. Um, the tutorials will be located online here as well as on YouTube. This is recorded on the 9th of January, actually now on the 10th of January. The idea is introduced in an earlier recording about how a teacher can produce a micro world, in this case the micro world corresponding to the river crossing puzzle, where there's a farmer, fox, chicken, grain, and a boat that holds only two things and the task is to get everything across to the other side of the river without the um, fox eating the chicken or the chicken eating the grain and the farmer can only have one other thing with him or her in the boat. There is a library program which was originally the brainchild of Max Clues who unfortunately died in 1981 but he taught and inspired uh, many people doing AI in the 1960s and 70s. The idea is to have a micro world in which programs um, are available that simulate some aspects of a problem solving situation and then what a learner has to do is make use of those programs to control the micro world, to interrogate its state, to change its state and in this case to produce a plan for getting from an initial state to final state. Here the idea is only for the programmer to produce the plan and then to express it in a specially prepared programming subset of POP11 which could be called a micro language geared for the river problem. Later exercises could build on this by getting the computer to solve the problem by making a plan but that's not what this one's about. It's about how a learner can get a feel for how to represent the world and change the representation and interrogate the representation and use the results. The teacher of a world file explained what a teacher could do in order to develop such a micro world. This tutorial, which is also for teachers, is to show how a learner can make use of the micro world after it has been created using the POP11 library, which is called LibRiver, and a teach file to go with it, TeachRiver. This micro world deals with a world in which processes occur, like the boat crossing river and something being put in the boat and something being taken out. Anyway, we shall not simulate the detailed processes of crossing the river, which would be required for a system to demonstrate fine-grained online control of the actions. Some programming teaching environments, like the MIT Scratch system, emphasize fine-grained control of continuous motion. So this is not about how to generate impressive or entertaining interactive displays. Instead, we focus on how an intelligent individual works out a plan of action without considering all the details, considering only the major transitions in the states of the world. This requires learning how to divide up continuous changes into sequences of discrete states and that's a major aspect of human intelligence and probably also intelligence in some other animals. This is a small step towards thinky programming defined in more detail in this website which is part of the poplog system. Now I'm not going to present mechanisms by which a learner can start with a continuously changing stream of input and output and chunk it and start thinking about the discrete world. This is concerned with a much later stage where the world has already been conceptually discretized and then the question is what can one do with the results of that process of learning? Well one thing one can do is learn to program. Anyway this is an example of a POP11 teach file and it's got a table of contents and I'm going to jump to the beginning. So as I've said this is what it's about. In this world it's quite useful to distinguish what could be called the internal semantics of the program 
which entities and operations of the computer uh, like adding numbers or storing something in a database or looking for something in a list or creating a list so th those can be described as the internal semantics of the program the instructions in a program refer to processes in the computer the external semantics refers to entities, states, events and processes in the world being modelled in this case a boat, a man, a river and so on so we're going to just assume the external semantics and use that to motivate all the programming. So let's go to the next section, jumping ahead. Um, we use the Pop11 River package, and that can be compiled by just giving the command users river. Pop11 has search lists for getting various kinds of libraries and documentations, and they can be changed for different teaching contexts. So if I do escape D on that line that's a pop11 command and it'll load the library and as a result in the output window at the top of this window it prints out here's the state of the river world please type intro instead of typing it I can just take the command that's already in there put my the editor cursor that blob that's moving around onto that line and type escape D and then it prints out let's enlarge the window it prints out the instructions about the world which I've already explained mentions various commands that are available which I'll go into in more detail including the two commands that I'll use repeatedly database to print out the current world model and view to show that world model in a diagrammatic way okay so let's go back to the other file um, we can give the start command and that start command um, produced this. I'm going to get rid of the earlier parts of the output file. In fact, I'll get rid of all of it and come back and redo the start command over here on this line, escape D. So it says, here's the state of the river world. There's a river represented by this bit of the diagram. There's the right bank, there's the left bank and there's a boat and on the left bank we have chicken, fox, grain and a man the order in this list is not significant they're all there together and the man is able to stop the fox eating the chicken and to stop the chicken eating the grain as long as he's on the bank where they are the fox will not eat the grain so they can be left alone now over here I can give a command which says print out the database this little d double equals greater than sign is called the pretty print arrow in POP11 and if I type escape D it prints out the initial database which is also shown in this picture the boat is on the left side which we can represent as boat is at left chicken is at left fox is at left grain is at left man is at left there are many other ways in which the information could have been represented for instance starting with is at is at boat left or something like that but this particular representation has been found useful for beginners and that's what this program uses now the command to print out the database produces the list of lists in a legible format the command view shows what the current state of the world is and we've already seen that and as the world changes there'll be different views illustrated here for example in some state you could have the grain and the chicken on one side and if they are left alone the grain chicken will eat the grain while the man and the fox are in the boat uh, then later the man and the fox could get to the other side the man could get out take out the fox and so on and by then the chicken will have eaten the grain probably earlier as it says here, the laws of our micro world should not allow some of those states to exist. Right, so this is what we've already been through. And let's see what happens if we use one of the commands that are provided as part of the POP11 database system. We can remove and we can add items in the database. If I remove both is at left and add both is at right, 
I can now print out the database again and we have both is it right everything else is the same as it was before as shown here we can also print give the view command and we get everything on the left except the boat which is on the right well the boat might have been moved by magic but we are just representing hypothetical situations and we can reason hypothetically by changing our database so um, in what follows from now on we won't be doing these direct manipulations of the database by using remove and add we will use the commands that are provided by the river program not the pop11 database program so remove and add are part of the pop11 database the river library includes things like put in take out get in and so on so we've already seen what the start command and the view command do so I won't repeat those um, let's clear this window clear the output window I type enter which takes me up to the command line I type clear press the return key have a blank window so we will start the view well, we've already the start command runs view so I didn't need to put that in I could try put in elephant but there's no elephant in this world so that should not be accepted and it says mishap using put in with non-existent item now pop 11 the language doesn't know anything about whether elephants do or do not exist in this world but the library program has redefined the error handler so that if you try to put in an inappropriate thing you get a mishap message and uh, we, I won't go into the details of the structure of the mishap message because that's something for another time on the other hand if I say put in man um, it says mishap using put in with man in other words the man can't put himself in it says please use get in so I can try get in instead and now I have mishap disaster involving chicken has eaten grain too bad so the error handler has detected the state where the man went into the boat and the fox chicken and grain were left on the bank and that includes a situation where the chicken can eat the grain and does and hence we get our disaster and now as the view program shows the um, uh, chicken is no longer th uh, the grain is no longer there we can print out the database and we have because it all fits in one line now it's not printed an item in a line man is a boat boat is at left chicken is at left fox is at left and nothing about the grain because the grain isn't there so it's not shown here either so that um, is an example of what happens if you run the commands in the micro language developed for this micro world so um, it was a bit tedious having to type the double quotes every time um, so the library defines some global variables man fox chicken grain and boat which are the words which in pop 11 would normally be typed with the quotes and instead assigns those words to the variables so the word man is assigned to the variable man which is a different object the word is a data structure the variable is a program item and likewise fox the word is assigned to fox chicken to chicken and so on that means that we can now uh, type things well just to illustrate the effect of that I can ask if man equals this object man and print out the result of that I don't need the pretty print error here so that should be true or false the equals thing takes two items and prints out true or false and or rather produces a result true or false which is printed out by that and it says it's true but it's not true in general for instance suppose I declare a variable X or say yes uh, let's declare a variable cat so I type that type escape D and now I ask is cat equal to the word cat and now that's false what is the value of the word of the variable cat 
it's an undefined object cat because no value has been assigned to it it's just been declared as a variable so the variable is different from the word but we use words in our database because we have lists of items and in this case those items are the words not the not the variables okay so we can try some more of the pop 11 commands for this micro world we've tried start view we can do put in fox so let's go to start again. i'm going to clear the output file into in fact i can redo the old clear command by typing escape return so that will redo that command i don't need to do it again type start that creates the database i don't need to do view because that's already been done I could print out the database by giving this command and it's as before um, everything's at the left but if I give the command put in fox we now have a change state as shown diagrammatically and if I come back here and I get, do escape D on that command we see the database says fox is at boat whereas previously it said fox is at left but everything else is the same by the way, I'll switch between these two windows by using Escape X. Escape X takes me to the other window, and then Escape X takes me back again. If I had m more than one file in the editor, I'd do something a little more complicated, but for now, this will suffice. Okay, so we have the fox in the boat, and we can therefore take the fox out. So I can give the command, take out fox. I'll type Escape D, and... Uh, the, these commands in this library all display the world using the view program which produces this diagrammatic display so the fox is back where it is the database is back as it started with the fox on the left the order of items in the database is not significant it doesn't mean anything uh, it's just what they are not in what order they are um, if I try to take out the fox again it says mishap item not in boat now so I was trying to do the command take out fox I was in this file within line number 336 which we have there so those are all debugging aids and likewise if I try take out chicken it says item not in boat take out grain item not in boat take out man again can't be done so um, let's continue uh, with start just to put everything in the initial state and we viewed it over there what happens if the man gets into the boat well I type escape D and we get this result the chicken and foxes are on the left the man's in the boat but there's no grain and we've had an error message chicken has eaten grain too bad mishap disaster uh, again it says on what line the command was and various other things we were the programs that were being run are shown here but I'm not going to explain that now that's a complication that we don't need um, the database has changed as we can see so we have man is a boat, boat is left, chicken is left and no mention of the, fo of the grain pressing on there are more procedures get out cross river and take out item no uh, so what we see here is that some of the procedures have empty brackets because when you run them they don't need any other any extra information about what they should do they just examine the database and do what's needed with it get out and cross river which we haven't met yet are like that but the takeout procedure requires you to specify an item to be taken out and if you run it without an input of that sort you'll get an error um, might as well show it take out sorry with no inputs produces a mishap stack empty this is a clue for those who understand uh, stacks that pop 11 gets its arguments from a thing called a stack that's a topic of another teach file, teach stack. I'm not going to go into that in any more detail now. So let's start again. We don't need to view. The state of the world is shown over there. 
and um, we can put in the chicken. So now Fox, Grain and Man are on the left, chicken to the boat. The man can get in. Is anything going to get eaten? No. The man is in the boat with the chicken. Um, fox and Grain are there, but Fox doesn't eat Grain and Grain doesn't eat Fox. Um, if I try get in again, I get another mishap. Man already in boat. So it doesn't let you get in, uh, run the get in command if the man's in the boat. Let's now run the cross river command. So that has put the boat on the other side of the river. It previously was on the left, it's now on the right. Let's look at the database. The boat is now at the right, it was previously at the left. The man is at the boat, the chicken's at the boat, and that was the same before they moved across. So they're on the right because the boat's on the right, but it doesn't need to say that here. Anything that needed to know where they are can work it out. The fox is at the left and the grains at the left, as they were before. Now the man can get out, and he's going to end up on the bank. Which bank? The bank that the boat is on. So here we have the man on the right bank, and we can use takeout, which we haven't used on this bank before. And um, because the man and the boat are on the right bank, the man can take the chicken out of the boat and the chicken will be on the right bank. We can print out the database. So now we have chicken at the right, man at the right, boat at the right. Previously they were at the boat. Now they're on the bank, on the right bank. Fox still on the left and grain still on the left. You can create a, a sequence of commands. So if we... Um, I'll do the start command again. So we're back to the initial state and then we can have a number of commands which I've marked. If I put my cursor at the top and press the F1 key it starts a mark. If I move the editor cursor to the uh, last line of the group and press the F2 key I have the range extended down to that bottom. And now if I type Control D all those commands will be done together. Well what happened? Um, the first thing that happened was that the man got into the boat. So the man got into the boat there and before anything else happened there was an, a mishap. The chicken had eaten the grain. S and um, in fact that was a result of the command check eat which is called by ch uh, by get in. So check eat can be run again, and now it finds that the chicken and fox are on the same side of the river, um, and um, as a result, the fox eats the chicken. There's no longer a fox, so we've had another disaster. A fox is eating the chicken. The get in program doesn't automatically call check eat twice. It just causes it once, and then that causes one of the things to be eaten. And then if we invoke check eat, the other thing uh, that was left on the bank might be eaten. Or because the man got into the boat without f removing something from the bank first. But the man can now um, do both of these commands together. So I've marked them with F1 and F2 function keys. I type Control D and the man crossed the river and got out. So the man went in the boat to there and then the man got out and went there. The interface could perhaps be improved by making it pause more when showing these successive states, but um, at the moment it doesn't. Now, a student can go and learn a lot by working on this and going further. I'm going to clear the output file. It's got to miss it. Sometimes people want to save the output file and that's quite useful. You can have a long history of your interactions look back at them, and try to work out what had happened, and learn from him. A student can work out a solution to the problem and 
write the commands which begin with the start which sets up the initial base and then go through a whole lot of other commands you can see how many there are and marked, I've marked them all using the function keys F1 and F2 um, and I'm just going to run the whole lot now let's just make a gap in that window output file so what happened I'm going to use the escape W command to show the whole of the output file uh, not the whole of it as much will fit in my display window so we have fox grain man the man put the chicken in the boat then the man got in and the fox didn't eat the grain excuse me and the grain didn't eat the fox uh, but then the cross river action took the man chicken over then the man got out then the man took out the chicken I think it's probably easier to use the other mouse pointer um, I'm just going to refresh this window um, then the man got into the boat leaving the chicken there then the man went back then the man got out got the fox and so on and various things happened and eventually um, the man came back uh, to this end um, with the fox and then with the grain and finally went back where the chicken was over there all on its own the man went back and got the chicken back so the chicken was carried over, brought back and brought over. And that's the standard solution. And when the program discovers everything's on the right hand side, it says, well done, you have solved the problem. So a student could first of all learn how to solve such problems by thinking about them and exploring the various alternative moves and what effects they have. Um, and can learn how to express all that in a long sequence of commands um, and at a later stage could learn how to get computer to work out the solution to a problem like that but I'm not going to talk about that now so uh, suppose you wanted to produce this demo several times instead of having always to type out all these commands and um, run them or store them somewhere where you can copy them and, and mark them and run them it's useful to put them together in a procedure which we will call solve could have called it solve river or something else and at the end of all those instructions we have the word end define so we start with define solve and end with end define we put all those instructions in the middle and that produces this long procedure um, I can ask the editor to count the number of instructions by marking them using F1 and F2 and I type LCMR means line count mark range and it says there are 32 lines so there are 32 instructions required now you've probably already realized that we didn't need so many instructions because there are some repeated patterns for instance get in cross river get out occurs there get in cross river get out occurs there getting cross over get out occurs there so because that occurs in lots of places it's worth defining a sub procedure which just has those three commands and then instead of repeating all those commands if we call that procedure cross we can just invoke it so we define the procedure cross and I've done it here in advance define cross and then get in, cross over, get out, and then end define. So that will mean that the command cross can be given to get these three things to run. So if I mark this from beginning to end, F1 and F2, and then type Control D, we now have cross defined as a procedure. And I can check that by typing cross with a printer and say, tell me what that is, escape D, and it says, I had my lift my cursor there. It says it's a procedure cross. That's it in the output window. Right, so let's use cross to well first of all we can test it. So I can do start, so we get to the initial situation over there, everything on the left. I can do put in chicken. I can try to run cross. Um, 
and it actually takes the chicken to the other side um, with the man. Why? Because cross does get in, cross river, get out. So the man was over there, get in, put the man in the boat, cross river took everything to the other side, get out, took the man out. So we end up as a result with the man on the other side. And the database has been changed. Um, man is it right, boat is it right, chicken is it right, and so on. Um, we can do cross again. Can you work out what that will result in? Get in, cross river, get out. Let's do cross again. All that's done is take the man back with the chicken. Um, so it's back to an earlier stage. We could cross again. I did escape D again. Got them out here. And then do take out chicken. Escape D. So the chicken's on the side there. Now if I do cross again, what's going to happen? The man's gone back. He went in, crossed the river, got out. But the chicken's still alone over here. So we can use cross to do that more complicated change and we can have a much shorter solution procedure which will um, start with put in chicken and then instead of getting cross over get out we'll just say cross then take out chicken then instead of getting cross over get out we'll just have cross then put in fox and then We've still got these other things, but they they can be um, shortened too, and then the whole thing will become much shorter at the end. And when it's done, you can test the procedure. I've only partially shortened it there. Though it'll still work if I do escape C, that will compile that procedure, and now I can run short solve, and it goes through the same set of things as before, and prints out. Well done, you've solved the problem. <coughs> Now, we shorten the procedure by noticing the re repetition of get in, cross, get out. But there's another repetition that we will find, which is put in chicken, cross, take out chicken, put in fox, cross, take out fox, and so on. And because that occurs repeatedly, but the pattern isn't exactly the same each time because something different is put in and taken out. We can represent that with a procedure that we will call move, which has an input. And that input is the thing to be put in and taken out. So that can be a chicken or a grain or the fox. So here we define the procedure move. We don't need that space there, but it makes no difference to pop 11. And we say it's going to be applied to a thing. And what do we do with that thing? We put it in to the boat. We cross, which means the man will get in, cross the river, and then get out. And then the same thing as was put in will be taken out, but it's now on the other side of the boat. So I will type escape C, and it says done over there. That comp procedure has been compiled. I could have done it by using function keys F1 and F2 to mark it, and then type Control D. Escape C is quicker if you've already got a, a procedure defined in the file. Okay, so now we can use move to shorten the um, uh, procedure. But if I try to move the fox, what will happen? I will try um, running start to set up the initial situation. Then what happens if I do move fox? Well, uh, the f f first part of the move fox is to put the fox, well, the first two parts, to put the fox into the boat, and then the man gets in, ready to cross the river, and at that point, there's a disaster. Chicken has eaten the grain, and the program is aborted. doesn't finish the crossing. If instead we start, we get back to the initial state with everything on the left, and then moves the chicken, 
And we go through a whole lot of things as before with the man and the chicken at the other end and the fox and the grain as they were. So that's no, uh, doesn't produce an error. But if I start, so we're back to the initial state again, and then move grain, escape D, as was moving the fox, we get an error because the man, as soon as the man gets into the boat with the grain, the fox eats the chicken. Disaster, fox has eaten chicken. So you can get different disasters under different circumstances. Well, these are all small fragments of processes that can occur in a simple micro world. And th this could be an early stage in learning to program and learning to understand procedures made of collections of rules with inputs. Um, and later, a student can go on and learn how to produce a program that does such things instead of just having to use the library program. And um, there are also ways of just keeping this as it is and extending it by, for example, adding a natural language interface to it. So you could have, instead of those commands in POP11, put in grain or get in or whatever, you could have, please will you put the grain in the boat? And then a little chatbot can take those words and work out what's being said and then change the database accordingly or might first check whether that action can be performed and instead of producing a pop 11 mishap disaster can respond politely that that action is not possible because something's in the wrong place or because something will get eaten or whatever um, another way this can be extended uh, which i mentioned previously is giving the computer the ability to work out a solution to the problem instead of the student or the user having to work out a solution and then typing it in. And that would require the program to explore different sequences of actions in a systematic way to see if it can find some sequence that reaches the goal. And at that, for that task, it's terribly important that the world is not something that you move continuously because then there would be infinitely many possible variations in the way you move. That ability to plan an extended sequence of actions depends on chunking the world into discrete states. For instance, planning your journey. You might think, well, I'll go by train. That means you go to the station, you get on the train, you go, the train moves, you get off the train and so on. Or you can think, I'll go by plane. And you think about the steps in that, going to the airport, getting on the plane and so on. And you can evaluate the different plans in terms of cost, the time they take, whether you like airports and things of that sort, by ignoring all the little details of how you actually get into the plane or the train or the taxi or whatever you need to, to do uh, to move around in carrying out your plan. So chunking, it, abstracting away from fine-grained details of processes is a very important aspect of human intelligence and will be re and is required for some aspects of machine intelligence although there are other kinds of intelligence like picking up a cup where you have to have fine-grained control of movement to make sure your fingers go to exactly where the cup is and not a little bit too far in one direction or the other anyhow there are many more details in the library that haven't been shown. For instance, I think I'll skip this, but the, the main point is that instead of having to do things uh, for going from left to right and from right, right to left separately, you can just have a procedure opposite, which says if you start with left, you can get right, and if you start with right, you can get left. And that can make your programs more economical. Um, opposite is defined in, in the River Library. If I ask you what the opposite of left is, it prints out right. If I ask you what the opposite of right is, it prints out left. So that makes some things more economical and elegant. Anyway, there's a lot more reading. Uh, there's um, learning how to do all the things that I've just described, which a student could learn in a slightly different way by reading the Teach River program. But then someone wanted to know about the mechanisms which operate on the database and how it gets manipulated can look at that then you can learn about the mechanisms out of which the database is constructed, which are list processing mechanisms. And these, the for each library is one of the ways in which the um, 
database is used and river chat is a teach file that shows how you can add a little natural language front end to this program or rather it sets that as an exercise um, and there are more which I won't go into now